For the past 50 years, we've clung to the belief that with enough investment, we'll find cures for what kills us. We've invested billions of dollars in technology and a never-ending search for elusive cures. Waging war on cancer, synthesizing new drugs, and hunting for genetic links with disease and aging. Why do we invest so much in genetic research? Why is it so alluring? Only a few diseases are exclusively genetic, like cystic fibrosis, and a few are exclusively environmental, like being hit by a car. Most chronic diseases or disorders, like cancer, heart disease, and autism, result from the interaction of environmental triggers, like air pollution, and our genetic makeup. Focusing on genetics makes sense if we want to continue to chase elusive cures. But here's the thing. If we identify environmental triggers or causes and eliminate them, we can prevent children from developing leukemia, autism, and other diseases. Investing in cures, which worked well for infections, gave us a sense of comfort in the face of death and disability of unknown cause. We can't live in a state of perpetual doubt, Daniel Kahneman said, so we make up the best story possible and we live as if the story were true. But this belief that genetic research and technology will solve our health problems is flawed. It fails to acknowledge that the worldwide epidemic of chronic disease is largely due to technologies of the past, tobacco, motor vehicles, air pollution, heavily processed foods, and toxic chemicals. But wait, aren't promising cures for chronic disease just around the corner? There are some effective drugs like antibiotics and insulin, but few real cures. Childhood leukemia, a dreaded disease of the 21st century, is a success story. Today, over 80% of children are cured of leukemia, once considered a uniformly fatal disease. Still, children with leukemia undergo wrenching treatments that disrupt their lives over many years. Some develop new cancers from chemotherapy or radiation. Many live in constant fear of relapse. What's more, cases of leukemia have risen by over 35% during the past 40 years, so many more children and their families will experience this wrenching disease. Let's take a closer look at why some children develop leukemia. This cluster of 100 children represents all children with leukemia. We've learned that paints and solvents, traffic, pesticides, and tobacco smoke can increase a child's risk of developing leukemia. If we eliminated these environmental triggers, we could prevent about 25% of cases. Yet too often, cancer agencies and foundations remain fixated on treatment, even as avoidable causes are discovered. In fact, only 1% of research dollars for childhood cancer is spent on prevention. Why aren't we doing more to prevent leukemia? Let's look at another condition, autism. Autism has risen dramatically over the past four decades. Our genes don't change that quickly, so the rapid rise in autism is primarily due to environmental triggers. Yet we spent 96% of research dollars to identify genes linked to autism. Only 4% was spent to identify environmental triggers. Medicine is great at mending people, if they have health insurance, but the real victories, like the elimination of polio, the reduction in motor vehicle deaths, and the decline in lung cancer, largely resulted from community-wide prevention programs. People get it. Over 70% of Americans favor spending more on prevention, yet 95% of our overall health dollars are spent on medical care and expensive drugs. What can we do about it? We need parents, physicians, and advocates to use their voices to support prevention. We need stronger laws and policies to protect people from pollutants. We need to test chemicals for toxicity before they are used in consumer products. We need to invest more in research to prevent disease. It won't be easy, but it's time to revise our story. Our lives depend on it.